Frank. We're in the Muse houses of Chelsea. This is the Chelsea Pig. It's a special place for me. Should we go inside and have a look? Let's go. You scored 29 times playing for England, and I'm going to ask you 29 quick-fire questions. Okay. Number one, the toughest opponent you've ever played against? Iniesta. Why? Could go either way on you. <laughs> Just not, not many midfield players who play in that central area wanted to take you on so much. I want to pass so they could run. And you know, I played great players, Stevie G, physically brilliant. But some of the times that he'd open up on you and he, he could take you either way, it meant that you couldn't get near him. Him and Chavi, when they played in that team, were something, something else. What was your pre-match ritual? There was nothing set in stone, but if I would, you know, if I'd go for a walk in the morning and do a, a lap of the block, and I scored, I'd do the lap of the block next week. <laughs> and then when I had a bad game, I'd change that and do a different thing. And I don't know, I, with my pre-match meals, I would try and be a bit particular. But there was nothing set in stone. But I think superstitions can sometimes get on top of you. I'd get to a point where I was trying to do one lap, walk the dog, tap the wood, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And then it becomes a mess. So um, I had a few, yeah. The best goal you've scored? Scored a goal against Barcelona in the Champions League where I chipped it from the byline. And it was one of those that was questionable. <laughs> a few people were questioning me, I still don't. But um, I would say that's my best technical goal. Kind of overrun it, spun and chipped it over Valdez at the time. Yeah. That's technically my best. The best goal you've ever seen? My favourite goal ever is David Platt, 1990 World Cup. Oh, Belgium? Yeah, yeah. spin and spin. the volley. Yeah. Just sticks in my head. I just remember being yeah. a young, impressionable kid and just being amazed at the skill level of, yeah. of it. Favourite car? Um, you want to sound too... Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, can't say, you can't say anything else, can you? In no. Chelsea, you got to say Bentley. Yeah. You rolled up in one. I did, I did. To Bentley. Fair, I've got one, to be fair. Well, it's hard for him. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> First football kit you wore? The football kit that I remember, it was Christmas, and we used to do presents in the morning, and then Mum would hold back one present and hide it. Yeah. And we used to go and have to find it. And I found it, and it was an AC Milan kit. Wow. And the, it was the, yeah, the red and black. Yeah, yeah, classic. It was kind of like Beresi time, I would guess. Yeah. Uh, Hullet, maybe. I don't know, that kind of period where Italian football was amazing, and I just stuck to me. Messi or Ronaldo? You know what, this is, I, I've always been a Messi man. And then I watched your debate with Kara actually <laughs> recently. And um, I actually think for what Ronaldo's output and actual numbers and goals in big finals and semi-finals and like we've seen, I think I'll maybe give him the edge now. That's, That's going to start good. a lot of hatred. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Wait till the comments come through on that one. Yeah, uh, your best subject in school? History. Wow, history. Why? Where's that come from? <laughs> um, it just grabbed my attention. Like you, I think you can flip through school and subjects that would not really excite me. But when you know we would do things on Romans and then Second World War, that sort of stuff, I was just interested in people and yeah. and history. Yeah. That's the first person that I've interviewed that, right? that said anything remotely intelligent. <laughs> no, it's not intelligent. It's not. It's not. <laughs> What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Probably from my wife, and it was actually when I got offered a derby job, and I wasn't sure about whether to take it. And Christine uh, said to me that her thing is jump and the net will appear. So, you know, take the chance yeah, and yeah. the net will catch you in the end. And I remember her saying it and I still, at that time, I'm really, like, it's like a bit corny, a bit cheesy. And I was like, yeah, right. But um, having done it, it was one of the best things I did. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take that as good advice. Did you say it to me though, the net wasn't there? <laughs> the net wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> Missed, I jumped through the net yeah. and landed. I always get asked this, Lampard, Gerard or Scholes. Mm. I'm not going to put you in that spot. I'm going to say Gerard or Scholes. It's a horrible question. Because, it is a horrible question, yeah. it is. And I, I get it in cabs in London. What, what do you think Lampard, Gerald Scholes debate and all that <laughs> stuff? That's, even to this day, we all had our own attributes and our own things and I, it's just too hard. And I, and I like both of them as lads and amazing players. I'll never forget the impact of training with Scholes. When I trained with England with Scholes, yeah. and I think I, I Manchester United players speak so dearly, even like, they just go, he's just incredible. And he was, I remember going, wow. But then playing against Stevie when Stevie was on his game, yeah was like, he had so many physical, powerful attributes yeah. that sort of suited Liverpool, suited the crowd, suited everything. He was like, but, so, that, I can't. I'm going to sit on that fence. I'm going to take the opportunity, it's not a quick-fire question, this, but do you think it is criminal that the three of you weren't able to play together more in a cohesive midfield? Mm. Scholes was obviously the left, you were in midfield. With mm. Steve. Do you think there could have been a way? How would you have put you three together in a team to make sure it worked? If you're the manager of that, you know, of you three? Yeah, well, we, we played in flat lines at the time, but it's 4-4-2. Yeah. Four, four, uh, to be fair to Sven, he tried to play a diamond uh, in Euro 2004. Um, and I know Scholes, he went to, to the left. Been playing centrally before, probably me coming into the squad, he was trying to fit us all in. Yeah. And it, it could have been done, and I say probably should have been done. Scholes, he then retired, didn't he, and came out of it. Yeah. You know, you know him better than me, whether he, he you know, wasn't happy that he'd been shunted out or just wanted to focus on Man United. But then he, then he developed into this incredible deeper line player. Mm -hmm. The skulls you I played against as a kid, who you played with, arrive in the yeah. box and all that stuff. If he'd, have, if he'd have done that and stayed in England set up and he played behind me and Stevie, yeah. I 
For sure, that's perfect. Could I think so. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They wouldn't have solved all our problems. I'm not trying to say that that would have been the magic, but if you think about it, I think logically, and once you transition to that deeper role, yeah. yeah. Favourite superhero? Batman. <laughs> Your biggest moment in football? Winning the Champions League. Sticks yeah. out a mile. The one thing you've kept from your childhood? Passion for eating sweets. <laughs> <laughs> Got a sweet tooth. Still on your bucket list to do? An Ironman. What is that? Just, what is it? Is, three, is it the three? Yeah, so you swim. I can't remember the distance. So I think it's a couple of miles. Swim, long bike ride, and then a marathon. Back to back, which would probably take you the best part. Well, more than 10 hours if I was to do it. I would love to cross that line at the end of doing that and do the training process and... Maybe I have to stop drinking martinis. <laughs> <so much. laughs> I, nearly, I nearly, I was thinking then, Joe, something. Should we all do one, you know, the golden generation for charity and raise a load of money in Iron Man? That would be quite yeah, an interesting yeah. day. We that, do a it? half one, which probably would be better. Half one. So yeah, literally oh, half can I do a quarter? <laughs> <laughs> this comes down. One thing you have in your fridge at all times? Probably cheese. I gave up cheese, you know, I was eating cheese boards after finishing playing football. But do you mm. remember when I started to... Yeah, puff out but a we all, we, you know, it becomes a problem that when you you go from training regularly as your job, yeah, how blessed you are, then all of a sudden you have to get yourself to train, and then yeah. if you keep eating your cheese, <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> your favourite away ground to play in? Tottenham. We used to beat them a lot. I think we lost. We lost. We lost once. We all did. We, we all beat them. <laughs> Sorry, Tottenham, Tottenham fan. <laughs> no, but we did, and and Chelsea had a thing from before I came to the club where it was they called it three point lane rather than White Hart Lane, and they just go there and win. And I've but you know that before. Yeah, it was. So it was. I, well, I remember losing once when Harry was there. We actually it was the first time we lost in like twenty visits or something. But the it was hostile with the fans, but, but in a good way on the pitch. Yeah. In a good way, it was just yeah. Past or present, what manager would you have loved to play for? Pep. Pep. Mm. Just... Pep. I just think um, when I finished, um, he's so great with managers, Pep, as well. Sometimes you only see um, his teams that he produces, which is obviously the real stuff. But behind the scenes, the things he does with uh, LMA, helping other managers, he sent me certain voice notes. I don't like giving private conversations, but it's a nice one. When I first had my first game for Chelsea and we lost at Man U 4 0. Right. And we played well for 60 minutes and we yeah. got done on the counter yeah. and then bang, bang, two, three and it was four. So face value is four and we can't defend it as a manager. You have to yeah. sort of take it on the chin. And then we went to the Super Cup and lost to Liverpool. Played well, lost on penalties. So I was on the plane on the way back from the game, a little bit disheartened. And I got a voice note from him just saying that the way my team, he said, had played, he said it was incredible. I love watching it. Blah, blah, blah. Really positive chat. Yeah. And it was one of those voice notes that deleted itself. It was almost like self-destruct. <laughs> I wanted to get home. Oh, go, I wanted to <laughs> listen to this, everyone. Do you know what I mean? Pep said I'm a good manager. <laughs> and, um, and it, but, you know, like just think things like that touches that, that make an impression on you as a manager yeah. myself or with people around you. You know, sometimes you get so caught up in your own world that you don't see things. And the fact that he's doing the business and yeah. sending you a voice note like that, I thought was special. And, and a lot of managers like that, Jose was like that. I bumped into Jose in the streets around here. Um, just after getting sacked, and he had a mask on, it was COVID, obviously, so he had a mask, didn't get him to the last minute, and he whipped his mask off. And before that, when he was at Tottenham, me and him were a, bit, a little bit like that, I'm not going to lie, do you know what I mean? And, and um, he came over and gave me a big hug, and he went, he went now you're a real manager, because you've been sacked. I was like, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> but, but I loved it, do you know what yeah. I mean? And, you know, that's, that's the world we live in. Yeah. Your go-to karaoke song? It'd be a Sinatra. It'll be, now the end is near. <laughs> 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 Something like that. What's the last thing you cooked? Spaghetti bolognese. I've got uh, spaghetti bolognese or I've got penne arrabbiata. That's it. So I just start like, rotate them occasionally. <laughs> but I love it. I wish I could cook more. You need a bigger squad. I know, I know, I know, I do. But I do a good spag bowl, it's good. Funniest in the changing room? John Moncur. Just <laughs> naturally funny man. Just would do things that I couldn't repeat here, but like, just funny stuff. Old school now, you get in trouble for it now, but funny. <laughs> Most competitive player in training? John Terry. Every day uh, at it, at the ref, like the coach who was the ref, like at everyone and, and pulled the place up when it needed by the scruff of the neck. The greatest of all time? Still a Maradona man. I mentioned the David Platt goal in 1990, but those years, 86 and 90, even the Hand of God stuff, I was just mesmerised by him and uh, there's something magic about him. The best play you've played with? I, I have to always um, split this one between John and Didier. Because John was the leader, as I say, drove the dressing room, did all those things. But Didier was the man for the big moments. Yeah. So I'd feel, I'd feel a miss to leave either of them out. Hazard or Zola? I'm going to bump into one of them after this. <laughs> <Hello, yeah. laughs> um, 
I'm going to go Hazard, but Franco made such an impression in the first year at Chelsea. I came as an all-rounder, but I think Hazard's levels at Chelsea were the best sort of technical, talented player that Chelsea's ever had. Most stylish player? player I loved playing with for style was David Silva. Just thought he was... Uh, just It was everything I expected him to be when I went and played there in training. Would go out, would drink beers with the lads, would be that. I, I expected him to. Drink beer, David Silva? Yeah. Would he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. maybe the Martini. No, no, he'd be there to the end. It was, oh, it was he's one of those. Yeah, even more. yeah, one of those. But just in training and his manner and uh, humility and st style, I, I loved him. Loved him as a player. The worst dress sense? Goalkeepers. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't like yeah, goalkeepers, do goalkeepers, we? Goalkeepers. <laughs> I, I remember Ed De Hoy used to wear the same. He's training trainers to training them back. Do you know, like you'd have a pair, like we'd have a pair of trainers that you get dirty and he'd wear them as his trainers. <laughs> <laughs> Sporting icon Federer. Yeah, big fan of his. Yeah. how he holds himself, talent, everything, longevity. What did you practice the most in training? Chewing. <laughs> <laughs> in the way it's yeah. work. I grew, I grew up on, on chewing practice, like probably from my dad or from early days at West Ham. We had a little school that would, was lucky enough to play with like the Canios. Ian Wright came at the back end of his, and it was just what you do. Yeah. You practice it because it makes you better at the weekend, and that stuck with me. Lastly, a penalty in the final minute of a game. You can't choose yourself. Who's taking it? Alan Shearer. Shearer all day long. Yeah, just be, I, I love penalty takers that are emphatic, you know, like pff, just would yeah. do that and um, Shearer. Brilliant. That's your 29 questions, Frank. Let's go and have a drink. Thank you.